Arsenal return to the top of the Premier League table with an opportunity, of course, to make that even better in the coming weeks. But we are reliant upon relegation threat and Sheffield United from keeping us there. And not only that, but it's a pretty boring fixture that ended up getting Arsenal into the position. But it doesn't matter. I will take boring as long as it delivers three points. This is the Arsenal Real Reaction Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is an incredibly difficult morning uh, here at TGT Towers, if you want to call it that. The connection is dreadful this morning. I don't know why. I don't know if there's been an issue in our area or whatever, um, but uh, I've reset everything. I've replugged in everything and I still think the internet issues are are pretty bad. So I'd just like to start this off with an apology um, because uh, the internet connection is is, is pretty poor. Um, I'm hoping that we are going to be, uh, you can hear me fine and I'm sounding fine and all of that usual stuff. And uh, whilst I'd love to use the superpower of a certain VPN to help me out, unfortunately, it's not, that's not its job. <laughs> so I can see plenty of you in the chat box as suggesting. So unfortunately, I can't use that. Um, but please do, please do let. Um, I think we're gonna be maybe chopping in and out a little bit throughout the show, but hopefully it's gonna be fine and uh, hopefully help. Yeah, a show where off. I have really no idea what's going on this morning. I at the Emirates yesterday, I had some really big issues, like connection wise, on another laptop. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm cursed. Maybe that could be it. Um, but let's uh, let's just see. Uh, let's just see if we can get through today's show in some way, shape, or form. Again, and my apologies for that. But please do drop a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel uh, if you're new around here with those notifications turned on so you never miss, <laughs> even if you'll be able to hear this one, uh, miss a show because uh, that would be incredibly appreciated it may be needed more than any other this morning whilst technology appears to be trying to let us down as much as it can um we may even have to scrap this show i don't know but uh we'll have to wait and see uh anyway arsenal managed to secure uh um, a significant victory um in an arsenal two luton nil victory it was a really boring game i'm going to be very honest about that i'm not going to try and dress this up as any kind of uh, you know, brilliance from Arsenal because it wasn't. It wasn't brilliant. It wasn't great. It wasn't fantastic. It was. It was pretty darn poor. Uh, is what it was in the end for Arsenal, um, in terms of like a spectacle. But that said, I will take that. I will take boring. I will take unimpressive. I will take whatever it takes, as long as Arsenal get the three points. That is what is most important in the scheme of a transfer a transfer in the scheme of a uh, of a title race it is just the it is the key point of making sure that you get your victories and and that is what we got last night is a win and not only that but of course arsenal made significant changes to their team in fact we made five changes to the starting 11 from the match against manchester city at the weekend and and that was obviously a game that was highly scrutinized for how arsenal approached it how they adapted to the game but ultimately, in the end, um, I, I look at what we've got and I look at the depth that we've got and the fact that we can make that number of changes for a Premier League game just a few days after a massive test against Man City and still come out on top. Not only on top, but completely unscathed, really. There was not at any point a sense of fear. I didn't at any point feel as though Luton Town were going to be threatening um or had a, a chance to really threaten us on the day which was really positive as well and uh we started off the game pretty you know it was it was it was pretty dull we weren't creating too much it was there was clearly some familiarity issues as players tried to work out one another and you know kind of if what's the word i'm looking for i suppose create kind of a scenario where they know where each other's going to be. Reese Nelson started on the right, and I thought 
there were moments where Arteta was kind of shouting at Reese Nelson to get back because it would take him a few seconds to kind of react. Uh, it would take him a few seconds to react to the situation. Uh, if Luton were countering, for example, whereas you would have um, kind of Saka running back, Reese Nelson was like, oh, oh, I need to run back. And so therefore would be a few seconds delayed before he did. And, and that, I think, did affect things somewhat. Um, you also had Smith Rowe playing in a midfield role, playing slightly further advanced. Thomas Partey obviously sitting at the, the, the base of the midfield, um, playing a role that was quite interesting. I was speaking to Harry Simeon before the game. We both kind of agreed that, uh, that having Zinchenko playing as a left back meant that you can play Partey on his own. Because what it means is is that you've got two kind of base midfielders. And Zinchenko was all over the field. I want to be curious what his heat map looked like. But structurally, it was always going to be something of a challenge. But because of how depleted Luton were as well, it meant that Arsenal were able to be as dominant as they usually are. And eventually we found the breakthrough. And the breakthrough came from a really good moment from Emil Smith-Rowe. Um, a fantastic tackle in the middle of the park and then laying it off to Odegaard who finds Havertz as the peace of mind to kind of hold the ball up and be patient until Odegaard gets into position. Executes the, cro uh, the crossfield pass perfectly. And it's a fantastic Odegaard-style finish. An absolutely slamming strike into the bottom corner giving Kaminsky absolutely no chance whatsoever. And that just com completely relieved all all of the pressure. And I th think in another game in which Arsenal maybe had their strongest lineup available, move for it and, and score three, four, five, six. But because it was, because we didn't have our first team there, because Luton never really wanted to threaten and were just kind of sitting back, I never thought, I never really saw it going that way. And so because of that, and because it didn't really go, you know, that way, I think that I'm really happy that it just turned out of a simple victory and that we can just kind of come away happy with three points so yeah let's let's hope that most games this season if indeed we need to take a, a controlled and a um a measured approach to a game with a number of changes which we might indeed need to to implement then obviously that type of performance is fine i saw a couple of comments after the game saying oh well we're not going to win the title if we play like this and it's a case of like well yeah ob obviously obviously we're not going to um we're not going to win the title if we play that, but we're not going to play that way in the games throughout the course of the rest of the season. It's just not going to happen, is it? Like we're not going to play like that, especially when we have five changes and especially when you've got players that haven't really played any minutes whatsoever are coming into the team. It's just, it's not going to happen. Um, so I don't have any concerns about the way that we played, but the second goal really took all the pressure off. And again, Emil Smith-Rowe very much involved in the processes there, very much involved in, in what Arsenal were doing. And uh, it was a really good ball from Trossard to find him on that left-hand side. And the cutback just gave Hashioka and, and in the end, Nelson, not really much chance. I was frustrated that Nelson didn't actually get the decisive touch in the game and in that moment. And I suppose maybe we're asking too much um, when it comes to that. But uh, yeah, Reese Nelson, uh, I think, had a, an interesting performance, was energetic, was lively. I wanted a little bit more um, from him to take this opportunity, but I don't think I could be too critical, um, too critical whatsoever. Again, it was one of those games. It was a really hard game to analyse in some ways, um, just because of the way that it did end up playing out. But Smith Rowe and Reese Nelson to have the performances that they did. And Smith Rowe, of course, in particular, who was given the Man of the Match award, energetic, defensively astute, um, really committed to the cause. I think delivered a very Arteta wanting display. He absolutely waxed lyrical about him in his, his post match press conference, did Arteta. Um, he was talking about him as if he was like the greatest player on earth for uh, the majority of his press to say, like, he's, he's an absolute delight to to watch and you know if it's if that's the case obviously you want to see you want to see him start more games i guess um just speaking to that press conference after the game he said uh, i look at my players in my squad in a different way it's a joy to have them fit if we want to utilize the squad and maximize what they have they have to play i think it was the right moment to do that and they responded really well i'm so happy with that because i think we've won again especially with a few players with good confidence physically and the rhythm right now they're going to be really important for us um and so therefore i think that you can only be happy with that performance from smith row does it change anything about his future is it going to change anything about his future in terms of is he going to stay in the summer does this mean he's going to get more minutes 
I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think this is going to have any major kind of impact on his future at the... Um, Oh, I think I disconnected there for a second. Sorry. Uh, I, don't, I don't think this is going to have any kind of massive impact on his future at the club um, in any way, shape or form. I think that if he was ever going to leave, this game hasn't changed that. Is it going to up his value? Maybe slightly. I, I always thought that he had a value of around 30 to 40, maybe 40 plus million pounds anyway. So I don't think that's necessarily going to have changed things. Now, Mikel Arteta did say that Saka was close um, to playing. I was kind of briefed with the other journalists in the press lounge before the game. You know, that it, it it doesn't seem like it's, it's, it's an issue for Saka as to why he wasn't in the squad. So I don't think there's any need to, to worry about that. Um, and I'm certainly not worried about that. I'd expect Saka to probably be fit and start the game against Brood for him to... It, it's good for Saka to get a rest. Um, it's important for Saka to get a rest because... He has been playing a lot of football. I know he didn't play over the international break, but ultimately, as long as he gets some time away from the field and if they don't risk it, you don't need to risk players. If you can't complete the activities in the training sessions, don't risk him. We just don't need to risk him. Uh, and we didn't. We didn't risk him, which is obviously a really good thing. And uh, we came away with a win without him in the side anyway. And, and I know we had some sub, uh, substitute performances. Um, Martin Ellie coming off the bench. Good to see him play. You think he'd probably start at the weekend. Rice, of course, getting a much-needed rest as well. That was quite intriguing to see him start from the bench. Um, Jorginho, of course, came off the bench as well. Whether he comes in back into the team on, on Saturday, potentially he might, although they might save him for the Bayern Munich game, which, of course, is only just around the corner. Uh, now, just in terms of the Premier League roundup um, and what we can potentially expect from some of our players, uh, sorry, some of the other teams in the league. Tonight, we see Liverpool like play Sheffield United and Chelsea play Man United. I'm not expecting anything from, from Sheffield United. I'm not expecting this to be a game in which Liverpool slip up and I expect them to return to the top of the table. Meanwhile, Manchester City, of course, closed the gap to us once again to just that one point. And we saw all of the critics come out saying, oh, look at Villa going and entertaining at the Etihad. You know what else Villa did at the Etihad? They got battered. They got Go absolutely battered, going, oh, well, they've brought their B team and they've still managed to score at the Etihad. I couldn't give a fly, and you know what, if Villa are scoring a goal, because they're conceding four. This is why we moved on from Unai Emery. We don't want the naivety. We don't need that. It was almost like they gifted City the win on the day. I don't know if it was kind of saltiness from Unai Emery, <laughs> but being sacked from Arsenal, they're giving City the points. It was a really naive approach from Villa. Yes, they scored. Yes, they got back into the game after going 1-0 down early on, which, of course, we didn't. And it's something that we haven't done for years. We used to always concede really early at Manchester City. Things have changed. Arsenal need to adapt. Arsenal need to change the way, the way they play when they go up against certain teams. And uh, despite all the, the mick-taking, I think people ended up embarrassing themselves with takes like that. And then we saw Brentford play Brighton and Hove Albion. I mean, if Arsenal's game was boring... I've spoken to a couple of people that were at this Brentford-Brighton game, and my goodness me, apparently it was dreadful. Apparently this is the seventh straight game um, for Brentford that Tony has uh, failed to score in as well. Um, just thought I'd bring that up. There's no agenda or anything. Just thought I'd bring that up. Um, but uh, And, of course, the other game being Arsenal's win against Luton. And that leaves Arsenal top of the table, uh, a point ahead of City, two points um Sorry, one point ahead of uh, Liverpool as well, but they can, of course, return to the top of the table with a win over Sheffield United tonight. In terms of top of the table VPNs, there is only one, and that is NordVPN. Um, now, of course, I may have been having some connectivity issues, but what I can guarantee is that I'm still safe. You can maybe be having some struggles with your internet connection here and there, but you know that you'll be safe online by using NordVPN. And if you use the code, which is nordvpn.com slash guna to go, you get yourself a significant discount off a one or two year plan. You can do it with... Uh, the helpful helping hand into your pocket as well with your wallet or your purse or whatever you want to use to pay for the, mo the most impressive VPN service that, of course, there is ever to exist. And if you're not happy with the product, for whatever reason, you can get a 30-day money-back guarantee. But why would you do that when you can change your geolocation on your laptop, your mobile, or, of course, uh, your tablet? Uh, it is a fantastic service, and we're very grateful to Nord to sponsor in the channel, as always. And not only that, but there is a football prize available as well, a signed and framed Mikel Arteta Arsenal shirt, uh, some instant win prizes as well, including some Gabriel Jesus, Erdegaard and Zinchenko prizes to get involved with as well. It's a very, very quick selling um, 
competition. Um, so I do implore you to go and get your tickets if you haven't done so already. More than half of them have already gone. Link down in the description as always. And uh, best of luck to those that are getting involved. And it's a UK-only competition as well. Right, I'm going to press the button for the second part of the show. I don't know if it's going to work because nothing's working for me today. But let's see if it goes. Here we go. I'm, oh, we'll be back right after this. I'm scared to like press anything at the moment. I feel like I press a button and something's going to break. Um, I loaded up the Arsenal website to go onto the um, the press conference just to read those quotes. And then I just saw the internet just overload. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. So if I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm blurry or fuzzy uh, whilst you're watching. Again, massive apologies for the, um, uh, the connectivity issues. I'm probably going to go blurry at different points throughout this second part. I can only apologize for that. I may cut out. I don't know what's going on. We have expected some pretty stormy weather last night down in the south. I don't know if that's affected the internet in the area. Um, it's not usually like this, um, so I can only apologise for that. It is incredibly frustrating from my perspective. I've already had to reset up the show um, once, but um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's I, I, However frustrating it is for you, believe me, it's more frustrating for me. Um, so <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, Jakob says, um, Tom, who would you pick to sign for the competition to Saka? I feel like we need a left-footed winger to give him a rest and stick with Arteta's inverted winger vision. It's a good question. Obviously, Pedro Neto is the one that stands out, but can you get over his injury record? I really love Xavi Simmons. He's a two-footed player. So that kind of rules out the the whole, well, inverted, because he can play both styles as well. But PSG don't seem to be looking to sell him. So you go with Nico Williams, athletic club in, in Spain. Uh, again, a player that can play on both sides, but again, not really inverted. He's, I believe he's a right footer on the right-hand side and can play on the left as an inverted winger on that side. But we've got a lot of depth on the left-hand side. There's not loads of options um, but let us know some of yours perhaps in the chat box as well. Uh, Matt G says, Tom, does Smith Rowe get an assist for the own goal? I believe he does in fantasy terms. I don't know if he does in official Premier League terms, though. That is uh, that is something I'm not 100% sure on. Um, but yeah, he, he did get the assist when it came to uh, a fantasy, but <laughs> I don't know whether or not he gets it for the... Um, for the official Premier League stats. Uh, Nick says, Tom, Man United fans getting excited about their backroom staff recruitment. However, let's not forget it's the same guy who brought Tonali to Newcastle. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I know what you're saying. But they are making some very smart decisions. We'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. Uh, Nell says, I don't know, Tom, uh, about you, but I felt like I was watching a defensive session second half. It seemed that was how we wanted it, almost to expand further from the huge defensive display against it. It was almost like we were testing Luton, and saying, come on then. Have a go. Like, we're just kind of content with this 2 0 lead and we're just going to see this one out, which I haven't got too much of an issue with. But if you concede, it can get pretty nervy pretty quickly. Um, Rob says, Do you think Arteta fawning over Smith Rowe is about PR, either upping his transfer value or persuading Smith Rowe to stay? I mean, everything's said with a reason. There's always a reason behind these things. Um, so maybe he was doing it for one of those two reasons. It is a press conference. He wants to be very praising. If he gets a chance to talk really, you know, up very happily about one of his players, then he tends to try and do that. So I think that's what we ultimately ended up seeing. Um, Daniel Mackey says, I tried some chocolate cake on the way to the game last night. You all must try it. Every bit as good as Tom suggests. Now, I... I'm going to be trying um, the Saka sauce. I am going to Nando's today um, and uh, will be in attendance to try Saka's new sauce, which does mean, of course, that I'll be, uh, what's the word, treating myself um, to a slice of Nando's chocolate cake as well. Because you cannot go, cannot categorically go to Nando's now without having chocolate cake. And by the way, I have been sent... A lot of messages <laughs> of people with pictures of their chocolate cake from Nando's. Nando's, you are welcome. This is completely free advertisement, you know, in terms of that. I'm not sponsored in any way um, by Nando's, but I just love the chocolate cake. 
And uh, it is the greatest chocolate cake I've ever tried. You wouldn't expect it from what is ostensibly a, a chicken shop. Um, but thank you to everybody that continues to send me messages saying they've tried the chocolate cake for the first time. And they now recognize it as the best chocolate cake that they have ever had in their lives, as Daniel has said there. So thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Um, Peter says, Tom, I thought yesterday was a good reserve performance. We got the two goals needed and then we went into cruise control. Only criticism I have is giving the ball away sloppily in the second half. What are your thoughts? And I think you're probably spot on, Peter. Yeah, we could have been a little bit more conservative. We could have been a little bit more, um, maybe, I suppose, attacking at times. But I think they were just kind of happy. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, Andrew says, sadly, this chocolate cake is a UK thing. It's not available in Australia. Australian Nando's don't have chocolate cake. You are bereft, Angela, of something quite special. Well, if you come to the UK, now you've got a reason to, to go to a Nando's over here. Um, Fuad says, Tom, are you getting a bit frustrated? Yes, I am. This connection is terrible. No, sorry. Uh, Tom, are you getting a bit frustrated with Kai's constant need to be, let's be honest, dive? He got away with it against Brentford, which would have sent him off and got booked last night right before he got subbed. Um, he needs to cut it out. It's as simple as that. It was a pathetic dive from Kai. I'm one of Kai's biggest fans, but he needs to sort it out. Like, yeah, it's It was really frustrating because obviously I wrote a piece yesterday. Was it yesterday? No, the day before yesterday. I wrote a piece on Tuesday. I didn't really, I thought about talking about it yesterday. I didn't really have a reason to bring it up, but I, I wrote a piece about the fact that there is obviously three games between now and the cutoff point um, that we've got coming up for where the yellow cards situation kind of just um, ends itself, um, that you don't have to worry about it anymore. In the three games against Luton, against Brighton and against Villa, if he avoided a booking in any of those three games, he wouldn't have to worry about a two-match ban. And I wrote this piece saying that if he gets booked in the next three games, You'll obviously face that too much, man. And it was also a piece which delved into how Arteta has changed kind of the discipline records. And I talked about how that discipline record has progressed over the last three to four seasons under Arteta as well. So there was more in it than just the thing about habits. But my goodness me, did I get a load of stick for this article. On Twitter, the abuse that I was getting was ridiculous. I don't really understand why. Like, I absolutely understand kind of the headline, maybe well, the tweet I put out was a little bit like, come and read the piece sort of thing. But I, you know, I put effort into these pieces. I want you to come and read them. And uh, yeah, I didn't really get the, <laughs> I didn't really understand why I got so much stick for that. But uh, I did. It's one of those things. At the end of the day, you you, you got to just grit and bear it. I, I did put a tweet out the other day saying, you know, surround yourself with people that support you and move on um, from the ones that don't. And supporters, by the way, are people that still give you criticism. You know, we're supporters of Arsenal. We still criticise Arsenal. It's not about having yes men around you. But uh, it was really odd. Um, but just back to your question, Phil adds, you know, he absolutely just needs to cut it out of his game because it is it's, it is getting a little bit ridiculous. Um, ben says, against uh, again, Tom, why not look at a player like Crescencio Somerville at Leeds? He put up a respectable number in the Premier League last season and Looks this season very good also. It could be another Tony. That's not the best comparison, Ben, to be honest. Tony's not scored in his last seven games um, for uh, for Brentford. But uh, uh, is there something to be said about a player like Somerville coming in and being able to take that step up to the next level? I think maybe Arsenal should be looking at something a bit, you know, just something better, really, than Somerville. It's not a bad suggestion, but I think there are maybe better players out there than, than him. Um, he strikes me as maybe a bit of a Newcastle type signing. Uh, maybe you'll see that happen. Uh, let's go to Josh. He says, I know Neto is our main target. I don't know if he is actually, to be fair, Josh. There's nothing been said that he's our main target. Uh, but how about Frimpong? He's dominating the Bundesliga. I want to see him uh, late. Uh, I went to see him late uh, at the last night, a few mates, and they destroyed Dusseldorf. What a player. He is a wing back. I know he's scoring loads of goals. He could probably play as a winger as well. Um, you know, he's a player that I followed for a long time, actually. I followed him when he was at Celtic. I was writing pieces about him when he was in Scotland. And if or not, he could make the switch to the Premier League. He used to obviously be in the City Academy, I think, as well, uh, from memory. And uh, he's he's just fitted into that wing-back system beautifully. Um, so whether or not he works for Arsenal, he's also going to cost you a hell of a lot of money by Leverkusen. They're only going to accept massive money for him. Um, I don't know if he fits. Um, but yeah, let's 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 wait and see. Uh, Benny Blanco says Zinni is terrible. 
harsh, uh, especially considering that he's the only player on the field that managed to complete two passes to every single player in the Arsenal team last night. Yes, he had a couple of mistakes. It's the way that he plays. It's his style. Um, he he gives um, he gives the ball away sometimes, and that gets kind of focused in on more than anything else. But he was still really influential, and positionally, he was really important to allowing Partey to play the deep role on his own for some degree. Um, is he going to be our left back going forwards? Is he going to be our starting left back in our most important games? I don't think so. And, you know, I don't think he's going to be, but he is a really good option for us. I've actually got an interview with him coming out a little bit later on today. So make sure you look out for that on football.london a little bit later on. Um, so there you go. Uh, Ambly says, Zinni is not terrible. Stop this foolishness. He works very well with Partey. As I said, like he's the only player that completed two passes to every single player in the Arsenal team. He was all over. You know, he was influential. He was important in, in the way in which we were building up the play. Um, but, He's not without his flaws, and he has flaws. But to say he is terrible, to say that he is a liability, as G Dog rather ridiculously says here, is is hyperbole, is exaggeration. Um, he's important to the build up, and he's a different option for us, especially in these types of games. Um, and he had some good moments, but people, you know, some people sadly can't escape the, the little mistakes, and that's what sticks in their mind, and they forget everything else that the player does in a game. It's as simple as that. Um, so there you go. Uh, Cross Jonky, this is a very interesting named person in our chat, says, uh, uh, Tom, was it quiet in the stadium as it seemed like it was in the coverage last night? Yes. Yes, it was quiet. Um, it was very quiet. I I am sympathetic in some way. It was an evening game. It was against Luton. We've made big changes. It wasn't the most exciting game. They tried. There were really times where we tried to make some noise, but they weren't really having it. And sometimes the Emirates can be like that. You know, sometimes the Emirates can just be like that. What I'm worried about is that in games where we've got coming up, like I, you expect us when we play by Munich that it's going to be a ridiculously good atmosphere. Like it's going to be really loud. It's going to be, you know, noisy throughout. And we're going to be lifting the team up going forwards. You know, it's going to be like that. Um, but. When we have like Bournemouth at home, that their games I sometimes worry about a little bit because there's almost an expectation from fans that we're going to win by loads of goals. And if we're not winning by 20 minutes, it goes very quiet and you start to build frustration. And rather than the crowd responding with like, you know, raucous support, it can sometimes revert to type as we've seen in previous seasons. So... Yeah, it's 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 a tricky one. I empathised it last night. It weren't the most enthralling game. We made a lot of changes. It was pretty boring, pretty dull, and we got a lead early on. And you know, there is a concern there, and I don't think it's too bad to have a concern about it. But uh, it is the reality, you know, of the situation that some games are going to be trickier than others to to get the response we want. I am going to end the show there only because I'm getting incredibly frustrated with the connection side of things. I can only hold my hands up and apologize. I will do my best to have it sorted by tomorrow, but it might be something that sadly is out of my hands. Um, it's just to do with the area that I'm in at the moment, the internet that we're going through right now. Uh, I'm going to switch up the cable and everything else and, and hopefully it turns out, but even the Wi-Fi, I've got wired internet. It shouldn't be bad, um, but it, I think it's an area issue um, today, it seems. So please do accept my uh, my apologies for that. Um, and uh, yes, I can only, as I said, I can only speak in those words. Um, but uh, I, we soldiered on and we got through it and we did it together. Uh, if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, I would incredibly appreciate it today more than perhaps any other, considering the issues that we've had connectivity wise. And um it is what it is. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the game in the comment section down below. I'll be back with you all tomorrow morning, of course, for the build-up now to the next game, which when we wake up tomorrow, will be tomorrow. It's mad to think that in just two days we have another game. That's the reality of Arsenal right now. You wake up after a game and you've got two days before another game. So tomorrow will be the day before the next game. It's coming thick and fast. It's football. We love it and uh, it's going to be a real challenge for us, but it does keep us having plenty to talk about. Have a fantastic Thursday, um, one of the best days of the week, and then tomorrow's Friday. Happy days. Enjoy yourselves. Stay safe, stay well, stay happy and respectful, and as always, up the Arsenal. Pressing the button now. Please work. Please work. Please work.